Guitar.com. I'm Bill Holland, and today we are looking at the Native Instruments FM8, which comes with Complete 5. Now you'll see here I've opened an Ableton Live track, I've created a new track, and I've added the FM8 into that track. The way I do this is by going over to my Live Devices, opening the VST folder, and selecting the FM8, then dragging it into the Audio Effects tab. Here you'll notice I've also applied an arpeggiator to create a basic pattern. Now one thing you want to do first in live when setting up your FM8 is going up into the Preferences tab. In Nuendo or Cakewalk Sonar, this would be a similar process, same with Pro Tools. All you want to do is go up and make sure that your MIDI control service is assigned. In this case, we have an Axiom 25, and you can assign which port it goes to. Now when setting up a controller in the FM8, you can assign any parameter to a separate controller by using the MIDI learn function. If you look here, there's a little symbol that looks like a MIDI jack, the standard MIDI jack that you would find on any piece of MIDI gear. You click that, you'll notice it turns orange, and then in order to assign it, all you do is bring up a control, say in this case we want to adjust our volume and have the volume controlled by a controller, and then what you'll do is actually turn the knob or dial on the MIDI controller device that you're using, and it'll automatically assign this to that controller. On any given MIDI controller, you'll normally find that the mod wheel is automatically assigned to the mod wheel on that keyboard device. If it's a knob controlled device, like the BCR2000, you can assign this to whichever control you like, given the absence of a mod wheel. Now let's take a look at a few of the patches in the FM8 that use the mod wheel. Here is the B4, now let's get that loop going again. We'll bring the mod wheel up. And back down. Now if we go to the Easy Morph tab, you'll notice that Timber and Envelope... Now if we go to the Easy Morph tab, you'll notice that Timber Envelope and Amplitude Envelope are located right next to each other, and you can control Decay, Sustain, Release, and Attack all very easily. All of these can be assigned to a... Tr a Again, all of these can be assigned to controllers. Notice also that the LFO controls, timber, and output controls are located next to the effects tab and an XY morphing control surface, which can be mapped to any XY control. You'll often find these on keyboards like the Axiom or the Core K25. Now notice again these are in the Easy Morph tab, and I can adjust these however I like. LFO rate. Vibrato. Tremolo, and Timber. I can also adjust harmonics. Brightness. Envelope amount, detuning, and velocity. Now I can also switch the velocity and stereo width of the output. And master volume. Now to demonstrate the effects, let's switch over to a different patch. I'm going to grab a synthesizer, analog style lead synthesizer. Notice the variety of controls that come with the FM8. Your master amount is right here. And you can select any of these effects to be applied. Right now, course and delay is selected. I can change time. 
and a host of other parameters related to the effect, including feedback. Let's turn that off for a moment and apply some overdrive. Tube amplification. Now notice also that you can apply a virtual cabinet to this, like on a guitar. This is very useful for getting that kind of new French house sound. And other effects are included, like a peak EQ, a talk wah, phaser, flanger, tremolo, and reverb. That's just the beginning of what you can do with the FM8. But stay tuned to GearWire.com, and we'll get a little more in-depth with some of the assignable advanced MIDI controls. I'm Bill Holland, and this is GearWire.com with the FM8.